Um, bonjour tout le monde. Bon matin. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here and for watching via webcast. I'm here today to report on the work that my office has done for Ontarians in the past fiscal year, as well as update you on the brand new areas we began overseeing just last month. This has been a year of significant change across Ontario at the provincial and local levels. It has been a year of great change for my office as well. Seven months ago, we learned from media reports that new legislation was going to transfer the investigative function of the child advocate to our office, as well as the full function of the French Language Services Commissioner. Il y a sept mois, nous avons appris dans des rapports de presse qu'une nouvelle loi allait transférer à notre bureau la fonction d'enquête de l'intervenant en faveur des enfants, ainsi que l'ensemble des fonctions du commissaire au service en français. Now, once the law passed in December, we took on the enormous challenge of merging those two formerly independent offices with ours. This meant creating a new organizational structure from three separate offices with three different bargaining units, finding synergies between three different locations, and making an entirely new budget proposal for the resources needed. It meant ensuring that all three offices continued to serve the public without interruption and being ready by May 1st. All of this while dealing with our regular work, including a 30% increase in complaints. Taken together, what all of this presented was an opportunity. An, opp an opportunity to help more Ontarians than ever before. To build on the expertise of our new colleagues in dealing with French language rights and helping children and youth in care. And to demonstrate how effective the Ombudsman model can be, whether through informal resolution of bureauc bureaucratic glitches or in-depth investigation of major systemic issues. This report is full of examples of how we do that across the wide swath of public sector bodies that we oversee. We do it by working proactively and addressing hot complaint topics before they grow. That's exactly what we did when we received more than 2,000 complaints about the Ontario Cannabis Store right after it opened. We set up a dedicated team that worked closely with OCS to iron out its customer service problems quickly. We also did it by investigating complex, long-standing issues, like the fundamentally flawed way that the Ministry of Transportation informs drivers of license suspensions for unpaid fines. After we revealed that many people were on the road with no idea they were driving illegally, the Ministry agreed to overhaul its system and report back to us. Although our systemic investigations get well-deserved attention for their positive impact, the fact is that we get positive results for individuals on a daily basis. I'm particularly proud this year of the way we were able to promote people's fundamental rights. We helped disabled and homeless people obtain health coverage. We helped people with developmental disabilities find placements when they could not be cared for at home. We helped refugees get driver's licenses after their, their identification was taken away by border agents. And we helped inmates who were being held in inhumane conditions. We assisted Indigenous inmates who had no access to cultural services that the province had committed to provide. And our investigations prompted solutions for transgender inmates whose specific needs were not being met. We even championed the rights of a journalist whose freedom of expression was violated when his laptop was seized by the municipal council whose meeting he was covering. And then there's the work that we've done with municipalities, school boards, and universities. You may remember that our mandate was extended to these sectors less than four years ago. Since then, we have resolved thousands of cases and shared best practices to help them improve their service to the public. We also provide stakeholders with resources, like our open meeting guide and a digital digest of open meeting cases to help municipalities comply with the law. This is the approach that we are now taking to let Ontarians know that we can help them with child protection issues and French language services. Our children and youth unit has handled hundreds of complaints since May 1st with some good resolutions so far. 
They are continuing work on ongoing investigations, and I look forward to releasing reports on those in the coming months. De plus, notre unité de service en français reçoit régulièrement des plaintes et poursuit les enquêtes en cours. En outre, j'ai participé à des réunions et à des événements pour établir le contact avec les intervenants dans ces deux secteurs. Je m'attends à ce que le profil de notre travail sur les services en français s'étoffe une fois que nous aurons mis en place un commissaire à temps plein qui sera responsable de mener cette unité. Nous lancerons très prochainement notre recherche à l'échelle de tout le pays pour trouver un commissaire. Entre-temps, nous accueillerons demain la conférence annuelle de l'Association internationale des commissaires linguistiques, dont je suis membre maintenant. Et j'ai hâte d'échanger de, des idées avec des spécialistes de langue des minorités de partout dans le monde. Our French Language Services Unit is also taking complaints steadily and pursuing ongoing investigations. I've also participated in meetings and events to reach out to stakeholders in both areas. I expect the profile of our French Language Services work to increase once we have a full-time commissioner in place who will lead the unit. We will launch our nationwide search for commissioner very soon. In the meantime, tomorrow we are hosting the annual conference of the International Association of Language Commissioners, of which I am now a member. And I look forward to exchanging ideas with experts in minority languages from around the world. I also recently attended the annual meeting of the Canadian Council of Child and Youth Advocates to share strategies and expertise with our counterparts in that area. I'm aware that one of the challenges our office faces as it grows is that we oversee so many things, our role is not always well understood. That is why we divide our work into topics, law and order, social services, and so on, to illustrate the different types of things that we can help with. And this year's cover shows that we've added two more. We tell as many stories as we can in this report in the hope that they will inspire someone with similar problems to come to us for help. After all, rights don't do you much good if you don't know about them. So I'm sure you may have questions about those stories and I'd be happy to answer them now. Thank you. Can you explain how it was to have a unit of services in French integrated your responsibilities in the last few months? Mais c'était un défi de d'assumer ces responsabilités responsabilité là, mais notre priorité est d'assurer que le service est à continuer sans interruption. Euh, je peux vous dire que les gens qui, qui, qui ont travaillé à l'ancien commissariat sont très dévoués, très passionnés euh, par rapport au, au service en français. Ils veulent promouvoir les, les droits linguistiques et euh, promouvoir la reconnaissance du fait français en Ontario. Donc, nous sommes euh, honorés de pouvoir continuer ce travail. Donc, euh, Sur le point logistique, il y a différentes choses à régler, euh, les systèmes informatiques, euh, les sites web, etc. Mais je peux vous dire que quand, quand vous combinez deux équipes de grands talents, euh, tout est possible. Avec toutes les plaintes reçues par rapport à la Société ontarienne du cannabis, est-ce que c'était juste signe d'un faux départ ou euh, c'est un, un problème qui va peut-être persister? Non, je pense que... Vous avez souligné la question. Je pense que c'était un fond départ, peut-être euh, des estimés qui étaient peut-être erronés sur la demande euh, des clients. Donc, euh, je pense que la demande était sous-estimée, euh, mais je peux vous dire que nous avons travaillé euh, de façon très étroite avec, euh, avec l'agence et on a pu régler des problèmes de façon efficace. Donc, euh, je pense que les choses se sont améliorées déjà et on s'attend que le service va être amélioré. What was the most surprising complaint to you, the one that sort of sticks out above the rest? I can't say that there was one uh, surprising complaint. I think that uh, if, if maybe if anything was surprising, it was the increase in complaints. The fact that they're up 30% this year, almost 7,000 more complaints. Why is that? Uh, a whole host of factors. We had uh, the Ontario Cannabis Store was one of them that was responsible for about 2,400 complaints. Uh, we had an increase of about 38% in municipalities. Corrections was up. Um, Service Ontario was up, so I think that um, 
it's a good sign that people know that they have an independent and impartial officer of the legislature to turn to when they're having problems with the bureaucracy. So uh, I take that as a, sign, as a good sign of encouragement. When it comes to the Ontario Canada store, was there one uh, factor linking some of these complaints? Was there one factor behind them that you could say, hey, this is really what went wrong here? I wouldn't say one factor. I think that maybe one of the most uh, striking features was that I think they really underestimated the demand. Um, and I think that's where all the systems broke down. It's just they were overloaded with demand. And uh, in, in my conversations with, uh, with the CEO, Mr. Ford, we had some great, great discussions about how to work together to solve these problems and get people the service that they, they required. And I think what was clear from those conversations is um, they just didn't anticipate that kind of a demand. Here's that one anecdote you have about the, the customer receiving an empty box. Yeah. How does that happen? And, and why would anyone ever be told to return an empty box? Well, I mean, you know, systems are designed and processes are put in place. I think that that's, that's just one example of a, an agency that's struggling, that's, that's set up um, with, I don't know if the lead time was insufficient, but they just did not anticipate the demand. And uh, I, uh, you know, I had the image of uh, a couple of kids on a wharf with a lemonade stand and a cruise ship showing up. Um, I think that uh, it, it was a surprise to those involved when they were... Um, planning and so you you roll out your your systems you roll out your personnel you roll out your um, your resources based on your estimates of what the demand is going to be and I think that's where it all started was uh, shipping an empty box I mean that's that's beyond well that can be a sure but that, that can be a product of rushing and not being able to handle the demand and so things get missed right when you're dealing with more volume than you're prepared for and and, and shorter timelines things get missed and that's an example you say you received an increase of complaints, and it seems like you know one of the common themes throughout the, the report is that these complaints are almost directly linked to foreign government policies. The moment a policy is, is introduced or announced, autism, uh, OSAP changes, the sex ed curriculum, uh, your office would get a wave of complaints. Can you t tell us a little bit about that and what you were able to do with that? Well, we say that, and I say that in my message, it's an opportunity for us to explain what our role is in Ontario's democracy. And uh, it is not to police politicians or to challenge broad public policy decisions. But once programs are up and running, we are there to oversee the bureaucracy, you know, to uphold the rule of law in that respect, and that we maintain um, an oversight over the administrative branch to make sure that things are transparent and they're working fairly. So. Once, I mean, governments are elected to make decisions, but once they put those decisions into, into uh, effect, then we are there to evaluate how well th systems are functioning. Is it common, though, for, for the Ombudsman's Office to hear complaints just about government policy? I think it's quite typical to get complaints when there are changes in policy and people are not sure where to go and they're not sure which avenue to, to take. So um, we are there at all times to inform people, even if something was without our mandate or external to our mandate, we're always there to provide assistance to, to the taxpayers that we serve. And so uh, we, we inform them, we inform them of their rights, and we inform them of maybe perhaps more appropriate agencies uh, that, they, that they could be referred to. What, what struck you, sorry, what struck you most about the complaints you were getting on autism? Well, I think, um, whether it's autism or adults with developmental disabilities, um, whenever you have families struggling to secure supports and services for their loved ones, uh, it's a very difficult time for them. And uh, they are quite passionate about the situation they're in and sometimes, frankly, quite desperate. And so uh, we, we strive to be of assistance in any way that we can in those, those situations. Even though we can't overturn government policy, uh, we strive to be of assistance to the people that call us. Were there any complaints that you received that were beyond your scope that you thought this is an area that needs more oversight? Um, I can't think of one right now. Um, you know, we, we have such a broad mandate. You know, we've gone from overseeing 500 public sector bodies to 1,000, uh, and now having those two new responsibilities, I think, uh, I think when it comes to administration, we've got the province pretty well covered. Yeah. The new sex ed curriculum, that was a significant driver of complaints, was it? I'm not sure about that particular issue, but again, uh, complaints have been pretty steady in the education field. Mostly uh, they involve decisions of school boards. That's, that's our biggest source of complaints in, in the uh, education field. And so um, we educate school boards on best practices, 
uh, and share information with them, and, and they're commonly receptive to, to our work in that field. So that's a good thing. What kind of decisions about school boards are, are driving these complaints? Well, for example, one we're working on is the closure of schools. So decisions to close schools, whether they're transparent or not, whether they're well communicated. Um, sometimes uh, school boards make decisions to exclude people from property, no trespass orders, that thing when they're dealing with a difficult situation. So what we do is we make sure that they follow their processes. First of all, that they have processes in place to deal with those situations that are fair and transparent and that those processes are applied properly. Combien de plaintes en français avez-vous euh, reçues euh, et sont-elles traitées comme auparavant Quels ajustements reste-t-il à faire dans ce cadre-là En fait, euh, nous avons reçu, je pense, que quelques douzaines de plaintes et euh, les plaintes sont traitées maintenant de, de façon très, euh, très humaine. Euh, nous allons encourager les employés d'avoir autant de contacts avec les plaignants que possible, de retourner les appels et de, de bâtir un, un lien avec les plaignants. Donc, euh, on, on vise le service euh, d'abord et avant tout, et euh, nous allons travailler très fort pour augmenter le service offert aux, aux, aux plaignants. Vous avez dit que c'était encore à la recherche d'un commissaire euh, pour diriger cette unité. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui prend tant de temps à trouver, puisque vous n'avez pas encore lancé le processus, c'est ça? J'aurais une annonce à faire peut-être dans le mois prochain. Ça prend euh, du temps à mettre euh, toutes les morceaux en place, de choisir un panel qui, qui sera très crédible, qui est très branché de la communauté francophone, euh, embaucher une un firme de recrutement, euh, mettre des contrats en place. Euh, ça prend du temps, mais euh, je suis très, très encouragé avec le processus jusqu'à date. Euh, donc, je ne peux pas en parler aujourd'hui, mais j'aurai d'autres nouvelles euh, euh, sous peu, peut-être le, le mois prochain. Pour l'instant, on continue avec Jean-Jean Pelletier qui continue d'être le commissaire par Absolument, qui, qui connaît tout le monde, qui connaît les dossiers, qui est très branché lui aussi dans la communauté francophone, qui, qui, qui est un atout pour notre bureau. Combien de fois vous avez rencontré Mme Meloni depuis que vous êtes euh, en charge de l'unité des services en français? Euh, ben, depuis que je suis en charge, je ne l'ai pas rencontré. Je pense que je l'ai rencontré euh, deux fois avant, avant que la loi ait entré en vigueur. Et la faux, Carole Jolin? Pardon? L'Assemblée la, 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 de la francophonie de l'Ontario. Monsieur Jolin, je l'ai euh, rencontré à mon, mon bureau une fois, puis je l'ai croisé à quelques reprises, et euh, on se retrouve maintenant au même endroit. Euh, J'ai assisté à une réunion du, du réseau de santé de l'Est de l'Ontario, à Ottawa, dernièrement, euh, et euh, ce n'est pas une surprise que je, je croise Monsieur Jolin euh, fréquemment, et je vais continuer de le faire, d'ailleurs. Je pense que la faute est... Euh, un parti intéressé, un, un, un parti prenant très important pour, le, pour les services en français. Et nous allons euh, continuer à consulter la FAU et développer une relation euh, productive avec la FAU. Puis depuis que vous avez euh, comme, pris ces fonctions-là, euh, vous avez dit qu'il y avait plusieurs priorités. La première, c'était comme de rencontrer les intervenants, euh, de, de, de s'occuper de, 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 de la conférence qui a lieu dans les deux, deux prochains jours et, euh, et enfin de, euh, de trouver un commissaire. Donc on, on sent que les priorités sont encore comme partie de cette, de cette fusion avec, euh, avec le commissariat au service en français qui est arrivé sous votre responsabilité. Mais après ça, qu'est-ce que ça va être, vous, votre vision euh, dans, dans ces fonctions-là moi, ma vision, c'est de trouver un commissaire qui va dynamique, branche avec la communauté, qui va avancer les services en français dans, dans la province. Je suis convaincu que les meilleures journées pour les services en français ne sont pas derrière nous, ils sont devant nous. Donc, euh, je pense que euh, l'avenir est très prometteur. Une fois qu'un commissaire est en place et l'unité des services en français, à l'appui de tout le bureau, de l'Ombudsman, euh, qui est maintenant un organisme plus vaste, plus puissant, euh, ça va bénéficier les services en français et ça va évidemment bénéficier les francophones. Your office is designed to be more reactive rather than proactive. I'm wondering how that will work with the, the children and youth unit because under the, 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 the standalone uh, child and youth advocate, I mean, they launched their own investigations. They were proactive into looking at potential issues in the system. Uh, how, how are you going to reconcile that? Well, with all due respect, I would say that uh, we are very proactive and uh, we put a great emphasis on being proactive. You know, if we can solve problems before they occur and they generate complaints, that's a bonus. And so uh, in our work, we are very, very proactive. Um, as, uh, as many leaders and governments say, we're the canary in the coal mine. So what we do with uh, departments like Corrections or the Family Responsibility Office, when we hear complaints, when we get data before they do, we report that back on a, on a quarterly basis quite often. And so we give them an opportunity. Right? 
right? So with the, with the child and youth unit, if you don't receive a complaint, how do you know that there's a problem? That the, that the youth, the child and youth advocate was out there looking for problems that weren't necessarily generated through a complaint. Um, so how, how do you how do you kind of carry on that work if it's not a complaint? Sure, based, sure. If it's a complaint based? No, we're not we're not limited to complaints in the collection of data. I mean, we're we are so tuned in to the community. Uh, to various stakeholder groups and the Canadian Council of uh, Children and Youth Advocates, like I talked about, um, I don't think there's too many issues out there that we're not going to be aware of. And, um, you know, we promote the early resolution model. It's not just about handling complaints and write, doing investigations, writing reports. It's working proactively with stakeholders uh, to get problems solved. And so we'll continue to do that. And, um, you know, we're very anxious to hear what kind of an advocacy function the ministry is going to come up with because the advocacy function is supposed to be carried out by the ministry but what I can tell you in the meantime is that our early resolution officers will do a large percentage of what uh, advocates were doing in the past so when children or youth call they will be informed of their rights they will be referred to appropriate agencies they will be assisted in, in any way that we can uh, within our mandate and so would you, like see, would you like to see an advocate in your office as well a standalone advocate uh, let's see what the ministry rolls out and we'll see whether that's adequate or not but I think that um, you know we're, we're, we're in early days now to assess whether the, the needs of children and youth are being met um, that could be a position that we adopt in the future we'll, we'll see uh, in, uh, in a couple of months ago Brad Blair went to court um, to try to force your office to look into the appointment of Ron Tavener um, you haven't publicly discussed uh, why your office has chosen not to, to investigate that. Can you kind of give us some insight into why that decision was made? Well, there's only so much I can say because the matter is before the courts. What I, what I can say, what I have said is that um, this, this was a political matter. It was not with, the, our, our act is pretty clear that we, uh, that I do not have jurisdiction over the actions of the politicians of, of the cabinet and the executive. So, um, so that's the decision that was made. Um, it's before the courts now, and uh, we'll await a ruling on that. When it comes to this deluge of OCS complaints, is that something that, that's eased, or was that just after legalization last that year? That was an initial rush that, that's eased considerably since then. It was uh, in the first month or so that there was uh, that, that uh, deluge, as, as you call it. But things have, have stabilized since then. So you got back to each one of these 2,400 people that, and you helped them find a resolution to their problem? Pretty much. I mean, uh, I don't know the level of contact with each file, but obviously uh, we responded to all complaints. We dealt with every complainant, and uh, as you'll see in the report, there's some testimonials there that uh, show great appreciation for the work we did in, in helping them get resolutions. In terms of the electric vehicle rebates, your office received a new wave of complaints in March of 2019 talking about uh, talk about what exactly, what, what, what is the current status, because it seems like uh, electric vehicle owners or buyers are still experiencing issues getting their rebates back from this government. Well, we helped some of them with that. Um, I think the, the issue that we heard the most about was from Tesla buyers, whereas the, uh, once the Green Energy Act was repealed, uh, there was a grace period for people whose cars were already on order, and I think they had until September. Uh, to take delivery of their vehicles and uh, that grace period, that same grace period was not afforded to Tesla uh, customers mm -hmm. and so um, anyway the matter went to court and it was dealt with but uh, we were still um, successful in, in helping as we give the example in the, the report one customer who had gotten half of the uh, $14,000 rebate did not get the other half and we intervened to help him get the other half. And so, and so the, the current complaints that you guys are receiving, are those still primarily with Tesla owners, or are they just with the general? I'm owner? not sure of that. I know that those complaints have dropped off significantly, so I don't know what the status of all, all those complaints is right now. You're satisfied that everyone who wanted to get a rebate has now received the, the full rebate that they were owed? Well, I can't say that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got hundreds of complaints. I can't speak to the status of each individual complaint amongst hundreds. But uh, we've done our best to, to get fairness for people and uh, procedural fairness, and uh, we've got a lot of examples where we're successful in doing that. And how would you say that the situation in this province has, has uh, been generally uh, between your, you know, your last report and this report? Has, has it improved under this government? Has it uh, declined? Has it been the same? 
Look, we work with whoever, whatever government is in power, and uh, we deal primarily with the administrative branch, so that doesn't change very much. Um, so we have great uh, relationships with deputy ministers, the assistant deputy ministers, and the people we interact with all the time. So, um, you know, we haven't put out a, a systemic report yet with recommendations uh, since the election. I look forward to doing that, and I look forward to working with any minister and explaining uh, the need and the rationale for our systemic investigations and why our recommendations make sense and should be adopted. So I look forward to that work. The reason I ask is this is a government that puts a lot of emphasis on customer service excellence. Have you seen that idea permeate through, is, or, or is, is the government still kind of finding its feet? No, I've, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that. And uh, I had discussions, for example, with the former Attorney General about court modernization. And we had some discussions about, um, you know, electronic improvements to the, to the court system. And uh, I found them to be very receptive. And uh, similarly, in my conversations with the Chief Digital Officer, um, it's, it's, it's agreed that, uh, you know, we're having a lot of good conversations about modernization and, uh, and customer service. Pouvez-vous nous expliquer en français la, la question de mon collègue euh, concernant, on, on, vous notez une recrudescence des plaintes euh, lorsqu'il y a eu, par exemple, des changements au niveau de l'autisme, euh, du programme d'éducation sexuelle, de, de l'annulation de la remise pour les, les voitures électriques. Euh, Est-ce normal de voir ce, ce genre de recrudescence-là? Absolument, tout à fait. Euh, Lorsqu'on change des politiques, il y a toujours des gens qui sont affectés, des fois, des fois de façon positive, des fois de façon négative. Donc, ce qui était important, c'est d'avoir une avenue pour ces gens-là de, de porter plainte ou de s'informer et euh, d'exprimer leur mécontentement. Um, si ça, ça relève de notre juridiction, nous allons prendre des plaintes, nous allons donner une rétroaction euh, au gouvernement. Et ça fait partie du, du rôle qu'on joue. Um, mais c'est tout à fait normal, lorsqu'on change une politique, d'avoir de, des plaintes. Vous avez, vous avez aussi évoqué euh, un changement de gouvernement. Je sais que vous, vous êtes en ce poste depuis quatre ans. Euh, donc, il n'y en a pas eu des, beaucoup des changements de gouvernement, mais euh, de l'histoire de votre bureau de l'Ombudsman, est-ce que c'est une, une hausse marquée pour un, considérant ce changement de gouvernement? Euh, moi, je dirais 30 une hausse de 30 oui, mais il y a plusieurs facteurs qui rentrent en ligne de compte. Il y a eu la légalisation du, du cannabis, euh, qui était un enjeu fédéral. Donc, euh, ça, c'est... Euh, il y a des changements au niveau municipal aussi, des changements de, de conseil et de, de conseillers euh, qui ont provoqué des plaintes aussi. Donc, c'est toute une... Une foule de facteurs qui, qui ont mené à une, une hausse de 30 mais euh, je pense que ce qui était important, c'est que nous sommes là pour les citoyens de l'Ontario et nous sommes là pour les aider euh, euh, à obtenir une équité procédurale. Vous avez des dossiers en particulier dont vous êtes particulièrement fier de la résolution que, vous avez pu, que votre bureau a pu apporter? Bien, plusieurs, puis j'en ai fait mention euh, dans mes remarques, euh, surtout lorsqu'on aide des gens vulnérables, que ce soit des détenus, euh, que ce soit des, des gens sans abri, euh, que ce soit des, des familles qui composent avec une situation difficile euh, lorsque euh, un membre de la famille est atteint d'une déficience intellectuelle puis ils ont besoin de support et de services. Euh, je pense que ce sont des dossiers qui, qui sont très, très valorisants pour, pour moi et mon équipe. Est-ce que les plaintes que vous avez reçues étaient un peu plus... Euh... Il y avait plus d'animosité envers le gouvernement de Doug Ford, là. Non, écoutez, euh, les gens, lorsqu'une situation les touche, euh, c'est un impact direct, mais c'est pas, pas toujours lié à la politique. C'est un impact direct dans leur vie, et euh, tout ce qu'ils veulent, c'est que la, la situation, situation soit rectifiée. Mais est-ce que, est que vous avez remarqué dans la formulation des plaintes qu'il y a eu plus de références, par exemple, aux, aux décisions du gouvernement? Ou... Mais écoutez, il y a eu référence aux politiques qui ont changé, qui ont causé la situation dont ils faisaient face, oui. Euh, mais euh, je pense que c'est typique pour tout changement de gouvernement qui change des politiques. Euh, c'est logique. Lorsqu'on change des choses, lorsqu'on change des coutumes, les gens deviennent euh, habitués à certaines choses, certaines façons de faire des choses. Et euh, je pense que comme être humain, euh, on a toujours des difficultés avec des changements.
Donc, euh, question, merci beaucoup. Euh, je vous souhaite une belle été. Thank you, everyone. Good summer.